Hello. Um, I hope everybody's had coffee and sugar and all the things that they need to get them through to the to five o'clock this evening. Um, hello, my name is Kirsty Elderton. I work for an organisation called FutureGov. Um, we build apps for local government. We're based in the UK, but we have um, a partnership arrangement with the MAV here in Australia. So we've been working with those guys on a couple of projects, of which Patchwork is just one, and I'll talk to you in a bit more detail about that later. Um, for me, my background is in local government in the UK. I was an assistant director for one of the big London boroughs for organisational development and customer service. Um, and as all of the major change and transformation projects that we had running in the, in the council were around improving services to customers, I also had responsibility for that major change um, portfolio. So I've been around um, change projects for about 10, 12 years now, I would say, um, in various states, some good, some bad, some lots of learning along the way. Um, but I think that's one of the things that makes working for future jobs interesting. Um, we very much um, <clears throat> focus on how we can work with practitioners and people who use the technology in the way that we develop our apps. Um, our vision really is to make public services better and cheaper and through elegantly designed products. And we think that the best way of getting to that is to build systems with the people that use them. Um, it doesn't, yeah, that's not really a, a novel or new idea, but actually somewhere along the line we started buying big off-the-shelf systems that don't necessarily work for people and then engaging in huge business transformation programs where we try and rearrange the way that we work to fit the product rather than the other way around. So in FutureGov we have a kind of bottom-up approach, which is interesting, and um, Matt Skinner, one of my colleagues, will be here talking to you a bit more about that approach tomorrow morning, um, and some of the other some other of our products. Um, for now, I'm probably just going to talk to you a little bit about Patchwork um, and the work we've been doing here in Victoria. And Patchwork is a simple cloud-hosted web application that lets practitioners connect around a client. Um, it is cloud hosted and it was interesting to hear the talk earlier about the cloud because certainly we've been some, through some of that process about making sure that data is protected. Um, but by far it's the quickest, easiest and most scalable way to roll out an application. Um, and yeah, it would be interesting to just talk a little bit more about that as we get into what patchwork is and, uh, and how it works. We, um, Patchwork really came about in the UK in response to a couple of serious case reviews. Um, the first was the case of um, Victoria Colombier, who died in February 2000, and the second was the, pe was the case of baby Peter Connolly, who was tragically killed by his parents in August 2007. Um, for those of you that work in the social care space, you might have heard about some of those cases, for sure they made, made the news globally. Um, in the case of Baby P, he had over 60 interactions with different parts of the social care system, from social workers to GPs to family violence workers, and you don't need me to kind of paint the picture of what, what that looks like. Um, but somehow, all of those agencies, despite working together for so long, weren't managed to weren't able to coordinate their resource enough to keep that child safe. Um, now, both of these cases um, happened in one London borough. They both happened in Harringay. So Victoria Columbia happened, and there's a serious case review. And the learning is that organi these organisations need to work together. They need to collaborate. They need to partner on how they work with these families that are vulnerable. And Harringay Council heard all of that and said, yes, we're going to do all of that. And then lo and behold, seven years later, they find themselves in exactly the same position with baby Peter Connolly. Um, and in the UK, quite rightly, this caused quite a public outcry. Um, and eventually it led to the commissioning of the Monroe Review, which allowed us to completely rethink the way that social care is delivered. And in particular, thinking about working holistically with families rather than um, working with individual components of that family. 
Um, so one of the things that we did at FutureGov, over the course of that period, I think technology went through quite a sea change. So technology started to be used as a way of connecting and building relationships. So we saw things like Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter emerge. And we started to think about how we might use technology um, as a response to this problem of connecting people across agencies. Um, so we secured some funding and our original hypothesis was that we would build um, a tool, we thought it was a data problem, that if in some way we could suck data from education and social care and um, health and some of the other organisations that operate in that space and present that beautifully to all of those practitioners that they would have the information that they needed to do their jobs and to keep people safe. Um, now at FutureGov we have a design ethos so um, we tested that hypothesis by spending time with practitioners and um, running workshops with um, clients, other organisations involved in that space and crucially social workers and during that time we observed a couple of things that are, inter that are interesting I think that challenged some of our thinking. Um, the first was that there was a, a, really, a real issue around consistent relationships with clients. So people hopping in and out of the clients um, journey through the system and the client not really understanding who's doing what when. And that was caused by recruitment and retention problems, really high caseloads and the pressures that that caused for practitioners, and all of that compounded just by some really bad and clunky case management tools that just didn't support people in their jobs. Um, and secondary to that, there was a kind of ongoing frustration that they had an incomplete picture of who else was working with their client <coughs> caused by weak ties between practitioners and a real concern about data protection, and, and over here that would be your privacy legislation. Who am I allowed to say what to when? So instead of navigating their way through that, practitioners felt quite paralysed by that and felt quite vulnerable by it, about it. And all of that kind of stacked up to this idea of um, a lack of early intervention and potentially increased risk for clients. And so doing all of that insight work and the co-design work with, client, um, with people involved in the system helped us to think quite differently about what a solution would be. It became really obvious that um, there was a couple of things that we just simply couldn't do. Um, so whatever we did, we needed it to be simple because the process and the systems that people are working with are already really complex and we didn't want to add to what's already really tough jobs for people. Um, we didn't want to create a whole other layer of structure or bureaucracy and it couldn't have been any additional buildings or hubs and it couldn't have been around kind of pulling people together into one space. We felt increasingly as we journeyed through this that actually this was a cultural problem and that a structural response of pooling people together doesn't necessarily respond to the cultural problems of how people could work together. So you've probably also heard that we're pretty broke over in the UK, so we also needed something to be quick and cheap. Um, and within that context, I think the biggest bit of learning, and if you're a worker in that space, this is probably no news to you, um, but it was that human networks really matter. And so instead of thinking about sharing data with practitioners, we started to turn that on its head, and now we think about sharing practitioner information around a client. So the big idea behind Patchwork is that professionals are better able to provide services to a client or family when they understand and can communicate with the other workers that are involved. Um, and it's those relationships that really matter for people so that when one worker has an interaction with a client they can be the eyes and ears of other workers and then they can share that insight and that information and that together they're kind of forming a team around a client or a family and so if there's a mantra for patchwork it would be to encourage people to think about our client rather than my client Practitioners didn't want extra data, they just wanted to know who else was involved with Victoria or Baby Peter or Catherine or whoever so that they didn't duplicate work or worse, worry that someone should have been involved who isn't. And equally it's really useful for them to know who 
um, who else they can contact, where there's perhaps gaps in um, the provision of care for a client or for a family um, that's perhaps outside of their ex area of expertise. So Patchwork really is a kind of supercharged phone book that allows people to collaborate around their clients. Um, when we did work with practitioners, and especially those from the enhanced parts of the maternal child health system over here in Victoria, some of the stories and some of those problems about how to work together with other agencies really resonated and you'll see on the screen there some of the things that um, some of the practitioners over here have said to us. Um, and it's a really tricky thing because everyone knows that partnership working in this space is a good thing, um, but no one really knows how to do it. And often the how seems to have involved in the past integrating big IT systems, co-locating co teams, or trying to integrate, integrate big sets of data so they make sense to people. And for us, that's a kind of so far so structural response. Um, truly personalized care for these people is not top down and it's not structured. It's nuanced, it's personal, it's beautifully human, and it needs to be networked. And patchwork really is a system that's about connecting people so that they can have the conversations that they need to have in a really human way. And there isn't a code base that can accommodate for that. So we very much believe in enough technology to solve the problem that you're trying to solve. Um, and we often get questions about, is Patchwork going to be a case management tool? When will we be able to upload documents to Patchwork? When will we be able to add notes? Um, the answer is you won't. <laughs> That's not the problem that it's designed to solve. It's designed to solve a problem around networking people and connecting practitioners so that folks on the front line know who each other are and how to get in touch with each other. Um, and so Patchwork works across a range of agencies. Knowing who's who and being able to contact them is just a really important part of strengthening our response to safeguarding vulnerable people. Um, and we hear from practitioners that we want to work together and it's easy to pick up the phone once you know who to call. And so Patchwork is just a way of taking all of the detective work out of that for practitioners. So it saves them time and energy and effort that they could be spending with their clients. Um, one of the interesting things about Patchwork is that we decided very early on that it needed to be as broad as it possibly could in terms of the number of agencies that are, are, are held in the system um, so that we could have a complete view of, of um, those workers around a client. And that's why the, pa the, the information in Patchwork is very light and thin, so we don't hold any case information about clients in there. It really is just their name, date of birth, and their address and postcode, so that you can connect any organisation, and then you leave practitioners to decide what they can say to who about a case. Um, and that way we can include <coughs> universal services, NGOs, as well as some of those services at the more acute end of the scale. And so Patchwork very simply visualises those case notes and bits of paper that people have their phone numbers on and the printed off contact list that people have stuck on their desk and shares it with other people. And as teams grow around clients, other people invite other people in, a bit like LinkedIn or Facebook, and that team grows, and then those people can invite others, and it grows quite, or, quite organically. Um, that's one of the areas that I think um, the application being cloud-based is really interesting, and one of the really smart things that the MAV have done with Patchwork is to buy a single instance license so that any, any organisation in Victoria can join the programme and that list of agencies and the, the way clients move between boundaries can be accommodated for in one single instance. And having the product hosted on the cloud has allowed us to scale that really quickly. Um, and I can't tell you, well, you will probably know this, but the relief when you talk to organisations about the fact that an IT guy doesn't need to come round and install something on their, on their laptop or their tablet or their desktop, you can see them kind of smile with relief that actually it's just a web link that gets sent to them. 
um, because it just cuts all of that stuff out. So we've been able to scale really quickly. Um, I talked a little bit about co-design and um, we continue to co-design with practitioners or with patchwork and we get feedback from practitioners regularly and one of the things that we have in the pipeline is um, to develop a client login for patchwork so clients themselves can log in and see the practitioner's contact details of those that are working with them and Sorry, I'm talking faster than I'm clicking. <laughs> it looks like this, if you want to see what it looks like. Um, the most interesting page, I guess, is this page. Um, this is an example of a team page. So the client in this instance would be Lorraine, and then you see um, the different contact details of the people that are working with Lorraine. And one of the bits of functionality that people really like is there's an email all button, which just allows people to click that and then email everybody working with Lorraine and say, I'm going on leave for three weeks or I'm going to be going to see them next week. Is there anything you want me to look out for? And just keep that communication going. And one of the things that's quite different over here to the UK is just the number of non-gov organisations that you have. So the ability to communicate across that range of agencies is just proving really valuable. Um, another little bit of functionality that's interesting is the raise attention button, the orange button there on the right, which is um, right. You're right. Yes. Um, which is a button that you can press that just tells anybody else in that team that you've got an increasing concern. And there's no way you can write about that. Um, you can't write what that concern is. It's just a little flag so that if anyone in that team is contacting that client, they've got an alarm bell that maybe they need to take some extra care or ask some extra questions. And if other people are pressing that button, then perhaps there's something that you all need to get together to talk about. Um, so where are we in Victoria? We've... Um, where are we? Here we are. Um, We've had the project live in Victoria since June last year. We started with um, five pilot councils, just trying patchwork in maternal child health. Those five pilot councils, just to talk a little bit about the pace of doing something with cloud, um, went live in six weeks from landing, having some conversations about where they might want to try patchwork to being live and using it was a six week process. Um, since then, the project's kind of rattled on a little bit ahead of us, actually, with councils wanting to join and participate, and now we're up to about 20 councils across Victoria using the same instance, and we have about 140 plus organisations on Patchwork, 300 clients, and about 300 or so workers all using Patchwork to collaborate. So, it's grown quickly. And we're also live in New South Wales. We have a project there that again got, got to live in about eight weeks. So it's been a really, it's been an interesting ride. And I think if there was a couple of insights that I could perhaps share with you about what I, that we've learned or noticed along the way, the first I think would be that you guys make stuff happen. I don't know if you know this. Um, the same project in the UK took us about eight or nine months. When local government decides to do something over here, it gets done. Like, that's an amazing thing. Don't ever lose sight or take, take that for granted. Um, the world's full of really good intentions and good ideas, but if you don't have the capacity to deliver, it's worth nothing. And the councils that we've been working here over here with and the MAV have just got this thing done. Um, that's probably enough. I can see John, I don't want him to hit me with that bell. Well, look, we might have to call it quits there because of yep. time constraints, so I think there's uh,